How's it going to y'all boys? It is week 14, and while our regular season is done, we have two bye weeks to go before we reach our conference championship, which, as far as I'm aware of, is going to be played against Notre Dame again. This will be like the fourth time in two seasons that we will play the Fighting Irish. Um, we have a little bit of recruiting to do this week, and then we'll have a little bit to do next week, and then... The conference championship will show up starting here with a couple of visits. We're just going to send them in this bye week, uh, you know, get it over with. And uh, a couple of guys that I thought were going to commit last week didn't, but I expect them maybe to commit this week. Maybe we try to give them a couple of points. JJ Tyson's 99% locked. Uh, he was at like 96 or 97 last week, so we'll expect that. Still in a battle with Spencer Stanley and Jeremy Harrison. Mike Fontaine and Billy White, we will be continuing to gain uh, percentage points with them, or percentage points locked, 44 and 53 respectively. Elvis Payne I thought was going to commit last week as well, but he's only at 97, so we'll hope that it's this week, and then we just keep looking, and it's kind of just giving a lot of people as many points as we can late in the season to hope that they commit, or at least get them into a good spot for the offseason now one guy we've been fighting with the whole time is spencer stanley and georgia actually had some sort of ridiculous gain i don't know how but we were up finally uh with the cornerback the 80 overall uh and then we had our visit and got the lead and then they had their visit and even though their visit was only worth 200 points more than us which they must have had uh or they must have done a good job getting their uh game goals complete but somehow all of a sudden up they're up 745 points, which is just kind of a bummer. So we'll, I guess, whittle that away a little bit, but it's definitely going to go to the offseason in the battle there. So we will go ahead and just quickly advance into the second of our two bye weeks. Uh, a lot of teams still have plenty of games to play, so there's a chance for us to move up in the rankings. Um, but unfortunately, Notre Dame is not one of those teams where a loss will help us out. You know, Miami couldn't get the job done against them, so uh, we're stuck playing them. Well, there it is. JJ Tyson has committed, so we have an 82 overall strong safety, the number one strong safety in the country, and a five-star committed to the team. Um, had a couple of good visits, actually a lot of good visits last week, still in a lot of battles, but just one more uh signee there as we do move up to number three in the country and i'm curious why is it also the same in the bcs did somebody lose texas at number one lost to west virginia the mountaineers oh, oh, oh mountain mama take us home that is fantastic the longhorns lose that might mean that they don't win the big 12 championship i'm curious to see what happens there notre dame was able to beat stanford um, TCU at number six lost. That might have been one of the biggest uh, games that we had a, a chance for. Uh, Oklahoma took him out 38 to 14. Purdue also lost at number five. Number 10, Kansas lost. Number 17, UCLA lost. Uh, and number 18, Iowa. Auburn, Navy, Arizona, BYU, and Florida all losing and dropping out of the polls. So just a uh, crazy situation there. You love to see it. You really do. Um, in the BCS, we're sitting also at three. Oklahoma does have to play Oklahoma State this week, and Texas will have to play Texas Tech. So what does that mean for our conference championships uh, as we're basically heading into conference championship week after this one? In the ACC, the Atlantic is all wrapped up. Um, Notre Dame's done it. I don't think they play another game. Yeah, 10-2 and two would make it complete season for them so they will win the atlantic we have already won the coastal we went undefeated in conference our one loss uh, there against penn state unfortunately in overtime the american looks like it's going to be won by navy they will play army but conference record wise they're sitting up at the top i guess it's kind of up to usf and cincinnati um did they play each other they did play each other, so there wouldn't be a tiebreaker there. So there's a chance that the 8th-ranked Bulls could end up winning that one. 
Texas in the Big 12 is tied right now with Oklahoma for the conference championship. They do have the win over the number one Sooners. So there's the tiebreaker. But if uh, they lose and Oklahoma wins, then they're right up in there. And if they both lose, I think West Virginia has a chance. Well, they lost to Oklahoma. So I think Oklahoma might be the one to win out. So just between the two uh, Blue Bloods, really, the two teams that everybody expects to do well in the Big 12, uh, how about the Big Ten? In the East, it looks like it's all Michigan. They're able to beat out Penn State, which is a shame. We would have rather Penn State just to make our loss look a little bit better. In the West, it'll be, well, man, this goes down to the tiebreaker between Nebraska and Purdue. Same conference record, same divisional record, same season record, but it was Nebraska getting the win in overtime. That is crazy. Down to the wire, three points of field goal is the difference between the Cornhuskers and the Boilermakers uh, making it to that Big Ten championship game. That's pretty crazy. The CUSA East is Charlotte with the West going to North Texas. Our two independents did very mediocre. BYU 7-5, and five, Army 4-7 and seven with a game still to play against Navy. In the MAC East, it's Miami uh, winning, I guess, because of a tiebreaker against Bowling Green. So they're able to take the East Division. In the West, it's Central Michigan. The Mountain West Mountain Division is easily won by Boise State. The Broncos 11-1 somehow, only number 19 in the country. And in the West, it's Fresno State, no problem there. In the Pac-12 North, it's kind of what we expected it to be, but Cal will be representing their division. Unfortunately, my Ducks 7-5, and five, uh, they Lost to Washington, but beat Oregon State. Mm, not exactly what you want to see as a Ducks fan. Pac-12 South is going to be USC. They were able to beat UCLA to secure their spot in the conference championship. And in the Sun Belt East, it'll be Georgia with the West being Auburn. Okay, it was pretty close between Auburn and I think it was LSU, but it looks like the Tigers lost to Arkansas last week. So uh, Auburn's going to make it. How about the Sun Belt? Our final conference, Georgia Southern. Looks like they swept it, no problem. The Eagles are number 12 in the country, sitting at a nice 11-1. Perfect in conference. Their only loss uh, by four points out of conference on the road in week two against Indiana. That's a big rundown. Uh, let's go ahead and check our recruiting for this week. I'm not sure anything will change, but uh, we might as well take a look. And also just to see J.J. Tyson committed is so so awesome uh two five stars now and i think we still have eight four stars but what are the rest of the top schools spencer stanley again just slowly eliminating that deficit and look at the bonus point difference this week 265 for georgia we're up to 355 so that's pretty crazy jeremy harrison in the lead slowly gaining mike fontaine in the lead, but he's only 58% locked. Billy White had a visit, so he does get up to 80% locked. I'll expect him probably to commit in the offseason pretty easily. Elvis Payne didn't commit this week, but he did go up two overall or 2% to 99. So we should see the 78 overall linebacker. Is he a four star? Yeah, the number four outside linebacker from Hawaii. I'll expect him to commit this week. And then we just keep scrolling down. Guys that we're in the lead with or were, you know. Uh, fighting pretty hard for the, it looks pretty solid. So very impressed still with the recruiting. What does that five star put us up to in the class? Moved us up a spot to number four in the country. 11 commits at this point. And I'm, I, I, again, I think we had maybe one or two guys committed at this point last year. So just a, a massive turnaround. So we can advance. Uh, through this final week on to conference championship week and we can get into this game against Notre Dame and see if just somehow we can manage to uh, continue to beat the fighting Irish and make our way into the playoff all righty so there it is Elvis Payne commits another 78 overall player onto the team and we get a running back who honestly might get cut at some point in Derek Atkins 69 overall Probably only a three-star guy. We get some XP. We honestly might level up. We're going to be awfully close. Oh, man. Less than 100 points. Uh, Notre Dame sitting at number eight in the country at 10 and two is just far and away the better team. Although we are expected to win. And that would make sense because 
the first game of the season, we beat them 20 to 14. Uh, we were one of their two losses. They lost in overtime in a big game at Boston College, but uh, man, we keep playing these guys and we keep coming out ahead. So I'll expect that to happen one more time here today. Well, uh, we're just going to wear standard homes for this game. Uh, I feel like we've worn a lot of weird combinations. I'm not sure we really have another good one that we could wear here. So we'll go with the, uh, the home and against Notre Dame. I think we'll just let them wear the aways. Um, I like doing the bowl one because I think it's stupid not to have the player name on the back. So, uh, that's what we're going to do. It's essentially a bowl game. Uh, it's, it's uh, essentially our first playoff game. 99 overall with a 99 offense and a 97 defense far uh, outweighs what we have but again we know how to win these games so we just got to come out and execute today the notre dame offense is basically first in the country they pass the ball like none other they score a ton of points they get a lot of yards they don't run a crazy amount uh, which is bad because we are first in the nation at stopping the run but only 51st at stopping the pass as we have a uh, top five defense so that's going to be what we need to look at this uh, game. Both of our teams score a ton of points. They score the most. We score the second most. Uh, but their offense versus our defense will be the storyline today. Their top players. Well, these are next year's top players. Marquise, John Taylor, and Radon Randell uh, should all be in the 90s. No problem. Their top players are already there. <laughs> 96, 93, 91 for their quarterback, right tackle, and left tackle. They do have a left tackle questionable on the game. So hopefully he is out and not playing. That would help us just enough. Um, time for us to grind this one out. Not expecting this to be an easy game as we come into Bank of America Stadium. It's a nice cold evening, but clear for this ACC championship game. Notre Dame will win the toss and elect to kick it off. So with a five mile an hour wind, we will... Get this one underway. Starting with the football. Marquise Jackson has a chance to really give us all the momentum early in this one as... Uh-oh. Blocking non-existent. Maybe shouldn't have brought it out. We're inside the 20 to start this drive. We're going to utilize Radon a lot in the upcoming games uh, in this season. So we're going to open this one up with a read option. Let them know exactly what to expect. And the blocking is fantastic as Radon gets nine yards there on first down. I would love to establish a nice strong running game early. So that's what we're going to attempt to do. As we'll hand this one off to CJ Beasley out towards the right, cutting it back into the middle and getting us a first down and five more yards as we march towards midfield. Plan their safeties relatively deep, but then pressing up at the line is interesting to me. So we'll see what this looks like as I'm going to scramble outside the pocket and we're going to take off. Right bumper was wide open, maybe for a lot more yards, but easier to just to scramble and slide. And it'll go to the counter on second down again, trying to get the running game going as much as possible. As CJ Beasley almost made that man completely miss, but another carry goes for seven yards for us. It'll be a play action on first down is, uh-oh, I'm going to throw this one away. Hopefully no intentional grounding and, oh, that's the worst thing that we wanted to see. Intentional grounding. Just couldn't get the ball near enough to a receiver, so loss of down and the loss of the yards. That play action hasn't worked once for us. Just seems like it takes way too long, so second and 23. We will look to throw one up, and I'm going for the timing route to Marquise, and I'm lucky that one wasn't picked off. Great play by Blake Poole, the safety to get up there. Gives us now a third and 23, and our momentum has seriously been hampered here as we will look to throw, and I'm throwing it up for him. Oh, no, this ball's well underthrown. Marquise almost came down with it. It was in his hands for a second, and then again, we're lucky that it's not picked off, and we're going to have to punt this one away. The defense for Notre Dame showed up early in this one as the punt will get off, and that's a great punt. Inside the 15, I think probably out at the 10 or 11, and that is a pretty difficult start for us. Got to rely on the defense. It's going to be a difficult game for them, but they just need to get one or two stops, and it could open us up. This is not a team that's supposed to be great at running the football, especially against the number one rush defense, but 
Their first play from scrimmage goes 41 yards. So immediately they are across midfield, and that is terrifying. As we'll see another first down. Can we do anything about it? Trying to bring the safety blitz, and we get to the quarterback, but he shakes off the sack, and he throws it up for a 50-yard touchdown bomb, and that is the worst way that our defense could have come out to start this game. Ah, that is so brutal. Had the sack, and instead it's six points Realistically, seven going the other way. Wow. In the SEC championship game, number four, Georgia gets upset by Auburn in a low-scoring affair. And hopefully if ours is low-scoring, it can be us that comes out on top. Marquise with maybe another returnable kick. Could be a mistake to do this, but... I'm going to rely on our special teams as we could pick up the right blocks. And Marquis off to the race is number 36, the last man to beat. I don't think he's going to get there, but he breaks the tackle and he gets into the end zone. So immediately Marquis Jackson answers back. Yeah, that is our returner of the year. Oh my gosh, the scoreboard's glitched out, but just like that, it's seven all. Our boy takes it 102 yards to tie it up and the defense... We'll get a second chance on this one. An opportunity to right the wrongs of that first drive. Definitely worried as looks like Notre Dame wants to come out and pass to open up this drive. Although, no, it's going to be a run towards the edge. And we're there to get the stop, it seems. So only allowed a yard. It's definitely an improvement. We'll see if we can continue to get stuff like that, though. Second and nine. Stepping back to pass. Guy's got to be open all over the field. And... Uh, they get six yards, but we force a third down. I'm going to expect the pass, but the question is, can we get this stop? Trying to play this one short. Guys have to be open. There's no way that our coverage is that good. Quarterback scrambling, and he gets sacked. Somehow the coverage holds for long enough, and we're going to hold them and potentially force them to punt this one away. I don't see them going for it on fourth and five here. Sidney McRae battled and battled and battled and finally got past his man and was able to get to Drew Pine. So it's going to be Marquise getting to touch the ball one more time here. You never know. The blocking has been pretty solid so far. The return and Marquise down the sidelines. Not going to be able to take it, but gets it just outside the red zone on a 51-yard punt return. What an absolutely phenomenal effort Marquise is giving us so far today. As now it's up to the offense, and honestly, I think the offense might be our worst units today. Uh, definitely going to have the hardest time. Won't be easy to find the yards that we need. As we'll look to the air on second down and getting outside the pocket. There it is. Logan Baldwin holds on to it through the contact. It's a first and goal down at the two-yard line. This is an awesome opportunity now for us to take the lead. Going with the fullback dive on first and goal. J.J. Barr up the middle, finds the end zone. And just like that, we've switched uh, everything up. We went from being down seven to being up seven in just a couple of minutes. So Frederick now gets the opportunity to kick it away again. And the defense has got to be feeling good. They create the stop. And it gives us the lead. If they can do it again, we're going to be in the driver's seat of this one. One thing that I'm going to be curious to see is if they go back to the run. They went with a lot of passing on that last uh, drive, and it didn't work out so well. So will they go back to the ground, and will they have success? They go to the air on first down and get four yards. Good tackle from Kale Mackey that time. QB here is... Having a good start to the game. We're going to go with the corner blitz on second and six. And no, it's going to be a handoff. It's an option keeper. Pine keeps it. And he gets the first down. Kind of a weird cutback into the middle. Should have just slid down. And it ends up being a smart decision nonetheless for this quarterback. As they go to the air again. And there's the safe throw. And Manny Stokes thankfully gets the tackle. But again, we give up nine yards. Let's see, can we stop the run that I'm sure is coming on first down? The pressure is there, and we do hold him. Says that he got a yard, but it's still third and one. I for sure feel like a run is coming on this one. Trying to get in there and break it up. Quarterback kept it. Kilmackey had a chance to hit him behind the line, but the arm tackle doesn't hold, so Drew Pine rushes for another first down. 
They've been bringing a ton of pressure. It just hasn't quite been getting there. Let's see, can Smith get in this time? An option out towards the edge. Durham Finch diving, can't get the tackle. But Will Phillips is able to do it. So far, this has been a grind of a drive. I accidentally sent a blitz. Not what I wanted to do. Thank goodness the quarterback just threw that one away. It works out, and we have him in a third and long, and a chance again to get off the field. I accidentally hot routed the wrong player, and then uh, audible the way to the wrong play, and uh, we had a chance there to get the stop. But Xavier Watts is open over the middle for 15. Just going to keep showing as many different looks as I can on this first down, expecting the run. They step back to pass. We got the pressure there almost immediately, but Watts was wide open too quick. So they were able to get the quick pass off. Every different little wrinkle we could throw into the defense might be enough here. First and 10. Will this one be a handoff? It is kind of a counter. Phillips is there. Can't get the tackle. And they get six yards. Osborne with a good carry that time. Just trying to bring enough pressure, but... It hasn't quite shaped up that way this time. Stepping back to pass. And Smith can't get there in time. Good little corner route to Bobby Jude. And Drew Pine, 7 of 8 through the air. Only incompletion was one where he just threw it away. And that gives him a school passing touchdown record for, for touchdowns in a season. That's a 38. That's crazy. The good news is if the cards fall the right way, there is a chance that we could lose this game and still make the playoff as an at-large team. Uh, hopefully it doesn't come down to that as Marquise down the sideline again breaks a tackle and Marquise is going to take another kick to the house to end the first quarter. I have never seen one man put a team on his back as much as Marquise Jackson has at points in this season. How on earth does he do it time and time again? Both times that Notre Dame has scored a touchdown, they've had to kick off to this man and he has taken it to the house uh, on both occasions. Just absolutely insane. So we are set to now open up the second quarter with a kickoff. We'll be doing the same in the third. Hopefully we have a lead going into that one, forcing them to return this. We kept them inside the 20. That was a huge mistake on that return. The bad news is that Every time that Marquise has to take one of those to the house, it's going to make him just that much more tired. So I hope that the defense doesn't continue to give up touchdowns. Going to keep bringing these blitzes pretty frequently as they shift a man over. This seems like a counter to me. And it's going to be a pass. Pressure not able to get there. Big hit on Jordan Johnson, but he holds on. And that one turns into another first down for the Fighting Irish. Their offense really is moving the ball well. Uh, we get, you know, some stops here and there, but just not consistently enough. It certainly doesn't help that they are uh, in the hurry up, which gives us less chance to get our guys rested or make subs. And again, we have them to third down. Question here, can we get the stop on third down? Kind of expecting a run. It's going to be a slip screen. Kale Mackey there. Did I get called for that? I, it's going to be an, a pass interference. Uh, I was trying to jump the route and get the interception and I ran into the running back so we give them a free first down when it would have been a stop and they would have been forced to punt it away uh, just really detrimental that's going to really cost us on top of everything else now the defense has to stay out onto the field and continue to try to get stops uh, just an unfortunate play Going to continue to try to bring this pressure, though. See what we can do. This is a run. Looks like they're going to lose yards, and they're going to lose a ton. He lost his forward momentum, uh, according to the game. So it's a loss of nine. It's third and 14. This might be a little situation of us getting bailed out by the game. On third down, not going to be another slip screen. They are going to throw it up. He's going to have a man wide open, but he was short of the line to gain fourth and one and the punt team comes out onto the field and guess who they have to give the ball to it's probably going to be a touchback although very very tempting to return that one can't be too stupid can't waste Marquise's stamina either so we'll just take the touchback and we'll take the ball here at the 20 yard line 349 left in the half plenty of time to work with chance to open up our lead to two scores as CJ gets two yards and Takes a pretty big hit. 
Offense really hasn't seen the field much this game, so nobody's really in a groove yet. On second and eight, we'll go with the counter. I got to cut it upfield quick. That corner blitz comes in. We lose the yard, and now it's third and nine. This brings us to a spot where definitely a chance of throwing an interception. We'll look to the air. And B should be wide open. Marquise, oh my gosh, Radon, you cannot miss him. He's throwing 25% on the day. And uh, I accidentally hit the Y button after the incompletion trying to catch the ball. So we're in the hurry up. Oh, there's no way that we can go for this on fourth down. So we're just going to try to go for the false start. Or maybe we'll have to wait for a delay a game. I guess that's what we'll have to do. That is not at all what we wanted, but I would rather lose the five yards than uh, the timeout. The timeout could be worth a lot more than that. Trying to kick this one away, that's not going to be the bounce that we want. Fielded cleanly. Oh, that just went straight to him. It's a bit of a shame. They have good field position now and a chance to tie the game up before halftime. Expecting this one to be handed off. Uh, they will actually go to the air, and there's a sack. Durham Finch got in there immediately. That might have been a QB draw, actually, but we get the tackle for loss. Not at all how I expected that play to go. Second and 14. This one's going to be a handoff, and there's the counter. Manny Stokes holding him up. Charles able to come in and get the hit and force the third down. So we've got a third and seven, expecting them to go to the air. Let me use our defensive lineman, and Pine getting hit as he throws. I'm going to get called for another pass interference. Oh, my goodness. Wow. So by doing that, I give Notre Dame a free first down for the second time in this quarter alone. And that's going to allow them to keep this drive moving and get inside the red zone now. Eight-yard reception on that play. Two minutes and one second left. Notre Dame actually just took their first time out. As we're going to bring the corner blitz, and the blitz got there. Millisecond too late from the sack, but we do get the stop on the throw. And we're going to sell out to stop the run on this one. Third and two, bringing the blitz out towards the edge. Will Phillips gets the stop. I'm going to take the timeout. It's fourth and inches, and it will be the field goal formation for Notre Dame on this one. Absolutely phenomenal kick is going to be good no problem we hold them just to three points there and we maintain the lead as nebraska is up on number two michigan 10-3 uh start of the second quarter well you know what this means marquise now back to return that's not the most fieldable kick but i would be a fool not to bring it out with the start of the game that he's having and oh my gosh he gets away clean one more time he's picking up blocks and it Marquise down the sideline is gonna take his third of the first half oh my gosh 105 yards to the house as he does it again absolutely blowing my mind and we extend the lead to 11 this is one of the single greatest individual performances I have ever seen from one player in a football game. Marquise Jackson is winning this game for us. 21 points scored on three kick returns for him at this point. As we're still in the first half. And there's time for him maybe to do it again as the quarterback just has to throw that one away. Who knows? Maybe we could forge Drew Pine into a mistake at some point this game is beyond incredible at this point expect another pass on second down and they're gonna have a man wide open good corner route uh coverage just not there from charles hart well we're gonna rush an extra man on this play try to get that uh pressure into the backfield so there's a minute and a half left in the first half and they're gonna go over the middle and they're moving real quick on this drive Notre Dame does not want to be held out of the end zone. As 28 to 17, they'll look to throw. And oh my gosh, wide open. The exact same out route that we saw earlier. I'm going to go away from the 3-3-5 here, especially now that we're inside the red zone. I'm going to use Rossini McCray for a play here. See if we can do something. There's a run, plenty of space. And thank goodness he was falling. Forced to take their second time out. The light of fire skill active for Notre Dame as... 
They did take that timeout, so what can we do? Second and three. Can we get the stop? Not expecting a run. Uh, they're going to go play action, and oh my gosh, it's a little shovel out to the side, and it's good enough for the first and goal. So the Fighting Irish bringing maybe a little trickeration to the table. With a minute left, this one's going to be a run to the outside, and Kilmacki just got trucked. Oh my gosh, <laughs> how does he get burned that bad? Notre Dame's going to score. Uh, with a minute and four left here in the half, there's zero chance Marquise is able to take this one to the house. <laughs> if he does it, uh, I might lose my voice and I might anger the neighbors. <laughs> Not a great return that time. Blocking close to being there. All righty. Well, the offense hasn't really been good at moving the football so far in this half. What can they do here? Throwing it. Marquise Jackson comes down with it. And he's going to get out of bounds. Oh, my gosh. If he's able to turn around and accelerate sooner, that's another touchdown. Gets out of bounds, though, to save the timeout. And that's only right on second completion of the game as we'll step back to throw one more time. And outside the pocket, X is open. Right bumper coming over the middle is open. Uh, yeah, just kind of throwing off balance. Glad that one was incomplete. This Notre Dame defense is just so strong. Uh, as we'll throw the timing route to Marquise. I mean, it's his world and we're all living in it right now. This man is unstoppable. We're going to look to throw again here as we'll just get it out to Braden Bennett. Take a couple of yards and get out of bounds to stop the clock now with 38 seconds to go. It's honestly very crazy to me that with as many crazy touchdowns as we've had, it's only a four-point lead. Notre Dame has been very consistent scoring the football. This is probably an interception. Chad Bradshaw gets it. No first down. Uh, we're going to take our second timeout. I'm not against kicking a field goal in this situation. Gets us back to a touchdown lead. Hopefully we don't have to as Marquise has that one-on-one. -on -one. You never know what could happen there. Uh, I didn't mean to motion Brighton Bennett. Let's bring him back into the backfield and we'll take the snap. Third and two. The running back can't hold on through the contact. It's fourth down. I'm going to go for it. It is incredibly dangerous. But again, I would be a fool not to look for touchdowns in this game. We get coming over the middle. Guess who it is? Marquise Jackson gets us the first down with 21 seconds left on the clock. And we'll have to get up to the line and get this one off in a hurry. I uh, don't want to not score now after that. And we're going to scramble. Marquise might have been open, but... Right on Rantel, second and inches, doesn't get the first down or get into the end zone. Clock's burning, I'm trying to spike the ball. We might have time for one more play. I didn't want to have to use the timeout, and it's looking to be a disaster. Oh my gosh, that hurts so much. Third and inches, we were that close to a touchdown, but I'm going to take the field goal. Like I said, need to get points on this drive. So good job from Notre Dame. We'll have to kick this one off to get rid of the final second, but... Oh, just frustrating we couldn't get to the line in time, or even more frustrating that we couldn't just get that extra couple of inches to stock the clock. Uh, I was worried about fumbling the ball, and it might have cost us. Hopefully, we don't lose this game by, like, three points or four points. Heading into the locker room, up a touchdown feels good. They do get the ball. Uh, but, I mean, what do we have to say about this game? Offense needs to figure it out. The defense is doing... Okay, they've gotten a couple of stops. Maybe they can lock it down a little bit more, but just give the ball to Marquise Jackson. I think we'll win. So kicking it off here to start the third quarter. And this has been one heck of a game. If the second half lives up to the first half at all, might be one of my all-time favorite games so far in this dynasty. I am recording this on the same night as the previous episode, so there's a chance that I lose my voice at this point. Throwing it up. Jenkins gets the interception on the first play of the second half. The true freshman free safety with a game-changing interception. If the offense scores a touchdown here, it could be all over for Notre Dame. We're looking to go four for four against these guys in the last two seasons alone. Is right on. Probably should have slid down there, but looking to get a really aggressive, and he gets eight yards like to get in a solid amount of running since we weren't able to to end the half and Braden Bennett gets us that first down as we cross the 30 yard line alrighty looking to throw probably roll outside the pocket 
It's kind of available. X over the middle. Can we get it there? Mobley can't hold on through the contact. Good hit there by the DB to force the incompletion. And we will try the midline read this time to see what we can get there. Right on. Getting down. Trying to avoid too big of a hit. He does get up no problem. Gets seven yards and it's third and short for us. And believe it or not, we actually have not converted a third down so far in this game. So as we step back to pass, that's the first thing on our mind. And we're just going to scramble and pick it up. No problem. Got a little bit worried. It could have thrown the ball, but... Again, I'd rather scramble if it's open. We'll keep it on the ground. Now inside the 15 with a counter to Braden Bennett on first down. He gets up field. He gets a block and Braden Bennett gets nine yards inside the five. What a beautiful run and some fantastic blocking. Let's see if we can battle against the Notre Dame offensive line here now. CJ Beasley up the middle. Gets that first and goal. Gets us right on the doorstep. And when we arrive here, you know it's time for J.J. Barr. Will he be able to extend our lead to 14 on this first and goal? It looks all too easy, and he goes completely untouched. Oh, my goodness. 38 to 24. Two minutes into the third quarter. Well, the defense got us our stop for the half. That might be enough. I would love to get another one or two. But if that's all that we get, I can't complain about it. Again, they bring it out. Maybe they think they can return kicks, but we keep them inside the 20. What can we do here? They ran the ball incredibly well uh, to start the first half. I'm surprised we haven't seen it more, and maybe that's why. Defense is on fire. If Manny's getting those tackles, we are in good shape. Second and 12 here. They step back to pass. There's the corner route open. Sandcastle. Oh, my gosh. So close to jumping that route. Oh, it would have been incredible. Unfortunately, they do wind up getting the completion on the corner route. Keeps their drive going. Kind of expecting a counter here. No, he does run it towards the edge. And Durham Finch just obliterated him. And they lose two more trying to run the ball. Oh, I love the way that this has been going for us. Second and 12. And comes in motion again, expecting the pass. They step back. Quarterback gets sacked immediately. Looked like he wanted to scramble, but kind of got tripped up on the line. And it's third and very long now for the Fighting Irish. This is the kind of play that you would expect to see stopped. Can we do it, though, is the real question. They step back to pass. And the quarterback's going to get hit. There's a sack for Durham Finch. Defense back-to-back -back stops to open up this second half. Uh, we might run away with this one now. It feels like we are so close to getting our ticket into the playoff. We just have to finish it out, but oh my goodness, is it going well for us so far? Marquise Jackson on the punt return now. He's been dangerous returning kickoffs. That's a pretty dangerous punt return as well. 23 yards and great field position for the offense to work with. I didn't think it would be a possibility, but there's a chance now that we could see the second string team come in and play a couple of reps in a big game like this. Right on with the spin move. Makes one guy miss and then takes a pretty big hit. I'm not a huge fan of that, but I do like the six yards that he got. Curious what we can get on second and four as uh, Marquise isn't in the game anymore. I think he might be a little bit too tired. Right on sliding down. Gives us an easy first down. Alrighty, how about the counter as we go down almost to a minute left in the third quarter? If we get into the fourth quarter with a lead this big, it's going to look really, really scary for Notre Dame. We do lose two yards on that previous play. Sets us up for a slightly more dangerous second and 12 where we're going to go back to pass and we should be able to scramble. We're going to get a little bit of a block, not a great one from CJ Beasley, but enough to scramble again for the first down. They're not doing a good enough job respecting Radon's legs, so we're going to make them pay for it. Uh, trying to run with Braden Bennett. Cut it back inside earlier than I wanted. Only a yard. And that's going to be the final play of the quarter. I'm going to let this one burn down. Let's get into the fourth quarter and start burning the clock there as well. As, my goodness, what a third quarter that was for us. Two stops by the defense. We extend our lead. 38-24. I can smell victory from here. 
as we enter this fourth quarter. I gotta ask, if you're not subscribed uh, and you're enjoying this content, you want to see the playoff run, please feel free to hit the subscribe button. And I think that those three kick return touchdowns with Marquise are definitely worthy of a like. As on third and three here, we're going to go to the read option. Radon able to keep it. The pressure there. Ooh, had to take the hit. I couldn't risk sliding down and being short of the line to gain. But it works out. He's not injured. And it's first and goal now at the five-yard line. We can go halfback dive up the middle. The blocking looks really good. CJ got a little bit of it. They count him for three yards. And I'm not so certain this is going to work. But we're going to try the pitch to CJ Beasley. Pitch plays don't work often in this game. Cutting it back inside almost. I just didn't think we had the edge. We got a little bit there. It's third and goal now. I'm a little bit worried, but we're going to go fullback dive. And if we don't get it, we'll go QB sneak. We'll see how it works out. JJ Barr up the middle. He got met at the line, but he's able to fall forward. And it's now a 21-point lead in the fourth quarter. Oh, boy. One more stop by the defense, and this game is over. It's as simple as that. In fact, we might not even need one stop. If the offense just gets possession of the ball again, it might be over. We can't just give up on playing yet, though. The defense will need to come out and try their hardest, at least to slow these guys down as quarterback's going to scramble. Oh, my gosh, he juked me out somehow with the weird little uh, scramble, and he gets six yards. Super close there to just popping him, but it doesn't work out that time. Second and four. I don't think they can afford necessarily to run it. Oh, oh, almost jumped it with Don Riley. We do get the incompletion. I have a strong feeling that they'll try to run the ball here on third and four, but I'm going to make sure that they can't pass on us on that one or at least make it more difficult. Make them run the ball and keep this clock moving. Every second that comes off the clock right now is super beneficial to us as running back is open out there. We do tackle him in bounds. It's a good hit from Kale Mackey that time as... They will step back to throw once again, and they're not going to get the first down. So again, the clock will keep moving, and they need to pick up this yard. I'm going to bring the corner blitz. Could be super risky, but you never know. Coming off the edge, if we could get there. Uh, bad. Oh, yeah, bad launch. Bad jump of the snap there with me uh, using Charles Hart, so they get the easy catch over the middle there. Fans are kind of going nuts here. Lagging out my audio a little bit. Quarterback scrambling, and he's going to be sacked by Sidney McRae. He just didn't get far enough around the edge, and McRae is able to bring him down. So it's second and 17 now. This is going so, so well for us on this drive. They've burned at least a minute off the clock already. As they'll look to the end zone. This one could be picked off. Manny comes down with it. It's an interception, and oh, I should have not tried to return it. Good diving tackle there. Logan Smith maybe could have given him a little bit of a block, but we get the ball back. So we get our second interception of the game as we have to start this drive from the five. I mean, uh, I don't know. It leaves us plenty of room to pick up yards <laughs> and burn the clock. And that's what we're going to do. We're definitely going into clock burning mode now. Notre Dame's going to have to start taking their timeouts soon as we'll go with a read option here. And we'll slide down. Wow, lucky spot. They give us the first down there. They might be waving the white flag. We'll see if uh, after this play they take the timeout, but we are below two minutes, and that's typically when the AR starts to take their timeouts, and CJ Beasley gets a massive carry across, or at least two midfield. That is 34 yards downfield, and Notre Dame is not going to use their timeouts, so we're going to win this one easily in regulation. Much easier than our Week 1 matchup against them. That we won 20-14. to 14. Uh, We are going to come out into the victory formation and just take a knee on this one. Wait every second that we can, and that's going to be it. Oh my goodness, what a freaking game for us there. The clock's going to wind down here. And, oh wow, what a way to win the conference championship. Came out a very close one. Uh, Marquise absolutely is player of the game, and he's player of the season, I think, for me right now. 
just dominated in this one. Three kick returns for touchdowns. He had a bunch of good receptions. He had a decent punt return. Absolutely massive for us. Um, and we just kind of ended up slaughtering them. those two interceptions. In the second half, the defense really caught on fire. And, man, I got nothing else to say, but what a great, great game. I just can't wrap my head around what happened in that game. USC will win the Pac-12. And Nebraska, surprisingly, beats Michigan to win the Big Ten. Uh, as far as our game went, <laughs> we kind of dominated. We gave up 270 through the air, only, only passed for 84. Uh, but no turnovers. And, I mean, 21 points in the first quarter. We scored every single quarter. We shut them out in the second half. That's, uh, that's a dominant victory as far as I'm concerned. Marquise is our offensive player of the game. Uh, they show three receptions for 57 yards, but three total touchdowns. He had over a hundred, or he had over like 350 kick return yards and the punt return yards. Sidney McRae, two sacks on the game. Pretty awesome. Maybe could have given it to one of the interceptions, but uh, those sacks were pretty huge in setting up uh, the defense. So we have won the ACC championship. Definitely add that one. Uh, and we level up on top of it. So we can go ahead and add one to our uh national signing day or letter of intent skill so we can get a few more points in the off season which would be very very useful in picking up some of those players and let's just go ahead and advance into bowl season and uh i guess we'll start to set the playoff up the colorado state running back kaiwan herndon ends up winning the heisman uh, 228 carries for 14, almost 1,500 yards and 22 touchdowns. Five receiving touchdowns on 350 receiving yards. And how about that in third place? Marquise Jackson. He wasn't even on the list the past few weeks, but I guess that conference championship game did enough to skyrocket him. Radon Randell was the last guy that we saw a few weeks back. He's nowhere to be seen. Uh, just incredible. Uh, did not expect to see that. Did we win any other awards? Kale Mackey wins the Bednarik. Uh, Manny Stokes, believe it or not, wins the Jim Thorpe. Uh, Marquise Jackson wins the Johnny Rogers Award for Best Returner. Somehow no uh, Coach of the Year. Kind of disappointing there. And if we were just playing normally, uh, we would be in the National Championship. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe I should just not go through and do the playoff. <laughs> we could skip our way there. No, that would be cheating. We are sitting at that number one spot. We're going to go ahead and load up our playoff situation and get that all figured out. So obviously, again, going into step one and we'll open up the file. And as it loads in, I'm curious to see who is it that's going to make the playoffs. Again, the criteria is the Power 5 champions, the highest ranked G5 school, and then two at-large bids. And it looks pretty interesting. We are set to play Auburn in the Orange Bowl in the first round. USF and Penn State will play in the Peach Bowl. Uh, Oklahoma and USC in the Cotton Bowl. And we have Texas and Nebraska. That's a very cool, interesting matchup there in the Fiesta Bowl. Now we'll go ahead and and save this uh we could edit some bowl matchups we could see our bowl matchups uh oregon state congrats to them for making one oregon byu clemson ucla seems like a fun matchup and ooh, how about this i like this a lot michigan west virginia and the citrus bowl you know if either of those teams had to miss out this was uh that's a decent matchup at least to have to miss out and at least still get to play a, a good opponent so we are now set to play Auburn, who again, only made it into the playoffs because they were able to win their conference. They're nine and four on the season. A um, little bit weird. We can't look at the matchup. I, I, you know, it's, it's a bit hacky to get this to work, but uh, I'm curious to see if we come out winning that one. Uh, they're a 95 overall with a 90 offense and a 99 defense. Uh, so not going to be an easy game, even though they didn't have uh, a great season. But I'm excited to get that one underway. Unfortunately, the game's going to have to wait until next episode.
If you enjoyed this one, if you enjoyed Marquise just absolutely dominating, please feel free to like the video. It helps out tremendously on spreading these videos to new viewers, which is uh, always awesome. And if you aren't already, please feel free to subscribe to be notified uh, when each of these playoff games are going to be uploaded. I'm going to say games plural because I think we're playing more than one this year. We did make it to the playoffs last year. And then we had a, a disappointing loss and got knocked out. I think it was by Oklahoma in the first round. So we're going to make it at least into the uh, semifinals this time out, I think. But after you've liked and subscribed, please feel free to head to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, our community Discord, and the college football revamp mod if you're trying to get that for yourself. All that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.